coming up on Makosi Today. What's the future for the Zimbabwean acting industry? Oof. Well, how did you get to the place where you felt, I want to get married? <gasps> how did you bring it up? A little bird told me that you got 300,000 from the president of Zimbabwe. Next question. <laughs> July 2010, a 24-year-old man walks into the Big Brother Amplified house. On his mind is one thing and one thing only, the grand prize of 200,000 US dollars. For the next 91 days, Munya defies the odds, impresses the audience and survives evictions, making him a strong favorite to win the grand prize. On the final night, only five housemates remained. He almost made it, but in the end, came in third. Uti from Nigeria scooped the 200,000. Unknown Big Brother fans across the continent knew his name. Despite losing out on 200,000, Munya really hit the jackpot when he arrived home to a hero's welcome and was given a whooping 300,000. Makosi hangs out with Big Brother Amplified's diamond boy, Munya Chizonga. So, diamond boy of Zimbabwe. Yes, ma'am. Where did that come from, diamond boy? Well, uh, it, uh, the original name, uh, it came from a nickname that we had um, between my brothers. Uh, it's something that we call ourselves, we call ourselves the Diamond Boys. Um, yeah, when, back in the day when we used to make noise and go out and all that sort of thing. And then when I was in the house, I think the name stuck um, and I think it was attributed to my resilience. I mean, I was nominated like nine times, and I mean, you know what that's like. Yes. I mean, just so I was constantly up for eviction, and I persevered. And apparently, it didn't shatter my, or didn't change my character, or affect my character. So I was as strong as a diamond, solid as a diamond. But just as precious. Just as precious, and just good looking. I'd like to hope. Smashing. <laughs> so, Big Brother. Yes, ma'am. How did that happen? Like auditions? What? What was going through your head? You wanted to be... Ooh, um, Big Brother. You know, when I auditioned for the first Big Brother, uh, well, Big Brother 2008, uh, at the time, I just wanted to build up a body of work. You know, I'm an actor um, by profession and by passion. Um, and the only way that people recognize you is if you have a body of work or if you have a name that people can associate with acting. So I actually auditioned uh, for it by mistake. I didn't know what it was about. I didn't know how big it was. Um, I didn't realize how many people watched it. Um, and then from there, you know, the rest is pretty much history. Yeah. But once you got in, did you actually realize what you got yourself into? I didn't, eh? Because, I mean, you know, when you're in the house, it's just like living in a house. You know, I've been a boarder most of my life at school. So I just felt like I just had to get along with uh, interesting people, you right. know, and it was great because these people are from totally different parts of Africa. You hear totally different perspective stories, uh, ways of expression. So it, it didn't hit me. I mean, I'm no stranger to cameras, you know, uh, because of my profession. So that that never bothered me. But um, yeah, it wasn't until I came out that I realized, okay, like when I landed at the airport and there was all these people and jump people jumping around and. That's what I was like, okay, what, what did I get myself into? And you got, a little bird told me that you got 300,000 from the president of Zimbabwe. Something like that. Um, <laughs> it wasn't from the president, it was from a, a group of uh, businessmen who came together and they put together the prize. The president presented it, uh, which is very kind of him. Extremely yeah. kind. 300,000 reasons of kindness. Yeah. This what is did Africa, you do with way. it, though? Wow, I did quite a bit with it. Um, I'm still doing quite a bit with it. Uh, I invested a lot of it in film, which is my passion. Uh, you know, we made two feature films since then. Um, you made Lobola and Gentleman. And the Gentleman, yes. I've watched The Gentleman. Should I? I'm should still to watch Lobola. I'll make sure you do. It's it's, it's 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 funny. I think you like it. Okay. Yeah. So, like, how has life been since Big Brother? Life in general, like being no recognized pictures. I was at the Big Chill the other day, yeah. and people were coming. Is that Munya Chizonga? They wanted pictures. My whole family is here because it's Munya Chizonga. How does that feel like? I think you know. 
as funny as it sounds, it comes with the territory. Like you, 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 you get used to it. I mean, at first it's kind of overwhelming, and you know, you, especially when you're not expecting. You know, someone's hooting and saying, "What up? What up? What up? What up? Hi, hi." And you're thinking, "Did I do something wrong?" Or, oh, they, they, they're here for me. Oh, hi, guys. You know. Oh, really? So it's a bit overwhelming, but you get used to it, and then eventually you're just, I'm grateful for it. You know, because it's a blessing. It's not a sign of fame or anything it's it's literally a blessing that people will take out their time to be concerned about me coming up after the break like myself you did it twice why did you agree to do it the second time around the second time around um, Look, like I said, uh, I'm a filmmaker, and film is my passion, and that's my, my livelihood. We wanted to we're, we wanted to sell Lobola, right? So we had shot I was the film. Ask you that. Yeah. Did you do it because of Lobola? I did it because of Lobola. I mean, we we wanted to sell Lobola, and you know, in the film industry, marketing makes up the chunk, the biggest chunk of any budget, and it's very expensive to market and sell a film um, so that you make a return. So I figured, no, look, guys, let me go back into the house, right? That's three months of free advertising. I'll come out of the house, there'll be all this hype, and we just plaster Lobola uh, in everybody's faces. And it worked like a charm. And, you know, it worked even better than we thought, because obviously here's this 300,000. Now we can pay off all the people we owe. We can really make a big splash. And it really, it really, like, gave the, the film industry in this country shock therapy, which is what we wanted. You know, we wanted to make a, cr a, commercial, a commercial splash, not just make a movie that goes to festivals and that people keep under their pillows and what have you, but we wanted everybody to know about the film and at least to see the film so we can build an industry. And so did that's that work? It did. Um, I'm very proud to say that, you know, now, since, the Lo since Lobola, there have been three, four, four, four major feature films that have been made here. Major in the sense that you know they're not, um, you know, of a, of a quality that they can be sent outside the country. I mean, there's uh, there's Playing Warriors by Rumbi Katedza, there's uh, uh, Gringo by Ben Mahaka, and um, uh, with main actor Lazarus Boara. But yes, there've been three feature films since then. So, oh, and obviously The Gentleman. That's the third one, you know. So I mean, since then there's been this revival of the film industry, and people are shooting now. You know, uh, we've just done another short film, so it's it's working. I think it worked. It had the desired effect, you know. Comparing it with Nollywood, what are we doing right, or what are we doing wrong? How come we don't have our our, our films on African magic as much as Nollywood does? I think um, I think what we're doing right is the fact that we're making films. Uh, we're not making as many, but we're making films. And I think I think it's a matter of time, you know. I, I, and you know, we don't have distributors in this country. You know, when I set up my, my my film company, I originally set it up as a distribution house, and we that's the vehicle that we use to distribute Lobola, but. Distribution has to, you have to have links to all markets, like markets bigger than your own and, and what have you. And I think, I honestly believe it's a matter of time. And um, I think also Mnet should, well, it, it, it works two ways. We should make sure our, our products get there. Right. And they should come looking for, for, for work as well, exactly. exactly. Because there's not, there's, not as, there's not enough of an accurate representation of Africa on Africa magic, you know? True. So I think it's a responsibility of the broadcasters as well. And I think... Come looking for content. It's come looking for content. And I think that, you know, Zimbabwe over the last 20 years has had this black spot almost. You know, nothing has gone out of the country except negative news. Exactly. So to have something positive like a film, I think people are still not uh, accustomed to it. Like, I think it's something that we have to reconscientize people to. Do you think they're ready for it? I don't care whether they're ready for it. They're going to get it either I way. Like that. You know what I mean? I, I think it's it's not about them. I think, you know, it's high time it happened. I'll never forget this description of Zimbabwe. This guy, this Kenyan uh, filmmaker said, you know, Zimbabwe is Africa's last born. And the last born child in any family is always treated the, mo the best. They get away with, uh, with all of, uh, they get away with murder, literally. 
And anything that they produce is always received with open arms. So I think the time has come for us to, to put forward uh, content. Right. You know, a another reason uh, why you know, African Magic may, may not buy our content is, the, is how much we're, we're putting out and how much it costs. Right. You see, a Nollywood producer will bring 30 films of low quality, um, high story value. Mm -hmm. Now, Zimbabwean will bring one film, high, uh, high end uh, production quality and high story value. And he will ask for what he thinks is a, is a, is a fair price for that movie. For what he has done. Now, the price of that one movie from the Zimbabwean filmmaker, you can buy 30 films for, from a Nollywood filmmaker. Now, if you're a, a content distributor, content, content director, you're obviously going to go for more content and just right. package it the right way, you know? True story. Um, and, and numbers. You see, there's not as much. There's, for every one Zimbabwean, there's 10 Nigerians. So for every that's one. A lot. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. For every one person that's watched The, the, the Gentleman or Lobola, there's 10 who've watched um, any film that's coming out of Nigeria. Yeah, Johnson or Rita Dominic. Exactly. In France at the moment, they're protesting against gay marriages. Um, the government wants to pass some law that, you know, gay people can marry. You know, what's your take on that, on gay marriages? I think to call uh, something like that marriage, I think it, it, it defiles the institute of marriage. The institute of marriage is between a man and a woman, you know, um, as God intended, so that you can make offspring and, you know, keep the human race alive. Naturally, that's the way it works. I mean, a male and a female can make, can make offspring. So that's why they come together. And the union of marriage, or the institute of marriage, uh, seeks to keep them together so that offspring keeps coming out, so that the human race continues. The minute you put a title like marriage onto same-sex marriages, it's, it, for me, it's just not natural. I, I don't understand it. Um, I, I, to be honest with you, if somebody who was who is homosexual could explain to me how it works. I maybe I would change my perspective, but right. I don't understand. But at the it. moment, you're totally against it. I think if you call, I'm against calling it marriage. I okay. think if you call it uh, a union, right. uh, civil union, True. you know, if two people want anything to live together, else but anything else but marriage, because marriage is based on certain principles. You know. Okay, fair enough. Talking about marriage, you married. Mm. You're very young, and that's very alien in entertainment. Well, how did you get to the place where you felt I want to get married? Oof. I think my mother tells me this story uh, of when I was about three years old. Um, I walked into a room and I said, Mommy, I'm going to get married. At three. At three. And I'm going to have lots of children. And I did the same thing again when I was six years old. I don't remember any of this. So I think it's always been in my subconscious. It's always been part of the plan, you know, to get married. Um, I, I also didn't expect it to happen so soon. In fact, there, it there was a stage when I didn't expect it to happen at all. You know, um, I was living this, this lifestyle where I thought, look, I'll never be able to commit to a woman or find somebody worth committing to or however it works. And then I, I, guess, I guess I grew up. I just said, look, you know what? I, this is something that I want. I want to raise a family in a decent in a decent home and I know that in my industry you know it's either you're you're on the promiscuous side of the fence or you're on the safe side of the fence and I knew that I would have died if I'd gone to if I if I hadn't settled down and anchored myself and and fortunately for me at that time I met my wife I met the woman of my dreams and I met okay here we oh. go there we go. Bless her. There we go. The there woman you. of your dreams. Yeah, 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 I did. And yeah. You blush when you talk about her. It's like you got married yesterday. Next question. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So you started acting when you were six, though. Yeah, very young. I did my first, the first play I did was The Princess and the Pea. And I was the king. The king. I of was course, the king. The king is our inside joke. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, so, so you've you've come a long way with your acting. Yeah. What's the future for the Zimbabwean acting, you know, industry? What should we be expecting from you, from your colleagues? I think 
I think they can. I think people can expect a lot of great work. Um, you know, and m most importantly, I think people can expect actors to genuinely be able to do this and make a living out of it. Right. You know, uh, so that kids can go to school and say, "Mommy, I want to be an actor." An actress, of course. An actress mm -hmm. uh, or an act, yeah, and not be laughed at. I think that's what we can definitely expect. There's a lot of great stuff. Like I said, Gringo, the film is coming out uh, sometime this year. So besides the acting, the vision you have for acting in Zimbabwe, what else would you like to see change in Zimbabwe? Honestly, I'd like I'd like us to plant more trees. It sounds it sounds ridiculous. Well, it sounds funny, but it sounds very green. It's very green. Uh, when I'm not making films, one thing I'm very passionate about is the environment. Um, I I believe we need to leave, leave a legacy for our children. We need to leave something that future generations can hold on to. You know, um, and you know, rather than saying, "Okay, look, I will build the biggest bank and business in the world," let's just give them a clean environment. You know, um, yeah. And I'd love to see more trees planted and more people taking a, a care in their surroundings. I like the tree planting, though. Yeah, I, th that's something that uh, it's a project I just started. Uh, so we we're working with a with a lot of corporates to plant trees on mass. I mean. We lose, we lose trees. <laughs> That's a very white ambition. I'm sorry to say, PJ. It's okay. <laughs> white people plant trees. Black people do other things. They cut them down <laughs> and use them to, you know, to, to <laughs> cure <Also> tobacco. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but then, you know, the funny thing is, we'll all wake up one day and be like, ah, mm. cool, what happened? You know. Where did all the trees go? You know. True story. You used to live in London. It's a concrete jungle. It is. You know. It's uh, terrible. And, and you know what? When I lived in London, I felt, I felt like. Now, having lived in Africa for a year, I felt like when I lived in London, I was depressed and I didn't know I was depressed. I think it's the lack of energy, oxygen in the air. <laughs> but I was literally, I, I feel like a different person now than I do when I was living in England. So besides planting trees and acting, what else do you do? Well, I, uh, I write music. I, uh, I wrote a song. Um, I actually wrote a song with my wife. I'm writing another, a couple more. She's working on an album. Uh, and I recorded about three songs. Uh, I've been threatening you to do yourself. an album. Me, Singing. myself. My very self. Hey, you're blessed though. <laughs> I'm blessed though. I received. Thank you. <laughs> Me, my very self, I've recorded uh, three songs. I've been threatening to record an album since 2008. But the music industry, it's like another animal. Right. It's like, y you know. You know, walking. Have, have you been to China? No. Okay. When you I'd go to, love to when you go to China, walk into a bar and start speaking English, right? They will re they will reply in Chinese, right? But you're speaking English, and you know exactly what you want. That's what it's like working with Zimbabwean musicians. Right. You're speaking English. They're speaking Chinese. It's it's a, it's a whole other animal. So I haven't quite found my mojo yet. Right. But I've done three songs and I, I write for my wife. Um, so hopefully you hear those on the airwaves. So that was the Diamond Boy of Zimbabwe. We talked marriage, we talked Big Brother, we talked gay kisses, gay marriages, and he's got a movie coming out on Africa Magic. So tune in, take care of each other, and take care of yourself. Being spared in such a terrible and a fatal accident, you know that there can only be greater things waiting for you. You recently lost your brother. How has that changed your vision for football, for yourself and for Zimbabwe? 